present you a study on modern scientific research on Ayurveda. This is a social sciences case study. I live in Geneva, Switzerland, called the capital of global health diplomacy. And I first encountered, encountered Ayurveda in 2003 through a documentary film. A paradox struck me then about Ayurveda and the medical traditional knowledge of India. On the one hand, it appeared to be incredibly deep, rich and efficient. On the other hand, it was said this knowledge was marginalized and threatened. I felt sad and I had to understand. Since 2006, I have passed seven months in South India for research in the field. I interviewed about 100 people active in different fields of Ayurveda, mostly physicians. In 2006, I took my ill mother for an Ayurvedic treatment to India. She got much better. So I think the West is in urgent need of Ayurveda. For me, Ayurveda starts with the food. I have little India on the street where I live in Geneva, but I like the great India. Ayurveda is underdeveloped in Europe. How to develop access to Ayurveda then? A better recognition is needed to develop Ayurveda. This is what I came across my research that confirmed what has been mentioned by the literature. How to get it? The interviewees named three key issues here. Research, education and clinical practice. I decided to focus on the issue of research on Ayurveda with one question. Why is there so little research from modern scientific research regarding Ayurveda's recognition? To clarify this question, I have chosen to examine a double historical case study. It comprises the following two cases. The first study called WHO ICMR study and the second one, NIH study. These two studies have common characteristics. The objective to assess Ayurveda respecting its specificities, the belong to clinical research, the assessed treatment is a classical Ayurvedic one, on the rheumatoid arthritis disease and they took place here at ABT. They also have specific characteristics. The first study that took place between 1976 and 1984 was a longitudinal study funded by the World Health Organization and designed and conducted by ICMR allopathic physicians. The NIH study that took place between 2004 and 2008 is a pilot study with the best up-to-date modern standards. It was funded by the U.S. National Institutes of Health and designed and conducted by the U.S. rheumatologist Dr. Daniel Kurz. For my study, I compared both the two studies plus the Ayurvedic and the modern scientists with the following parameters interest and motivation, responsibility and power sharing, goals achieved. Regarding the second study, we observed that the goals were achieved with clear results and a good communication. And it even offered some bonus. Regarding the first study, the case is more complex. After the study itself took place, this is a three-step story. First, after the study, during the first 10 years, there was no communication by ICMR, that is, by the modern physicians in charge of the trial, but some communication only by the Ayurvedic physicians. Two, between 1997 and 2006, two references in non-scientific writings mentioned negative results. One of them is a paper by ICMR executives. And a negative rumor about the study circulated in India. 
Ayurvedic physicians nowadays still keep in mind this study as a negative one for Ayurveda. Three, during the last phase, a scientist from the USA, Mrs. Manorama Venkatrama, a US sociologist of Indian origin, analyzed the data and found statistically significant positive results. These scientific and positive results circulated through presentations and publications in peer-reviewed scientific journals since. So in conclusion, about this first study, we observed two points. First, the ICMR allopathic physicians in charge of the study never published any scientific paper about it. Instead, ICMR contributed to a negative rumor about this study. B. The positive results came to be known nearly 30 years after the study ended, thanks to the US sociologist I have mentioned. What, did, what does this case study show us? In both studies, we observe a dependence of Ayurveda, first on the modern scientists for the study and for the communication, and second on external foreign funds. Then, considering the evolution in time, that is, the evolution that took place between the two studies, we observe now a much better protocol to assess classical Ayurvedic treatment, a better collaboration between Ayurvedic and modern scientists, a good and global access to Ayurvedic scientific publication. Some open questions remain on the first study. Why did ICMR modern scientists not publish the results? And how did a negative rumor about the WHO ICMR study circulate in India? One hypothesis is that there were two different agendas there. One by the allopathic scientists who had a biomedical approach and one by the Ayurvedic scientists who wanted to assess Ayurveda itself. In conclusion, we see that one, modern clinical research works to assess some classical Ayurvedic treatments. Two, the recent evolution of the assessment of treatments in modern medicine encourages modern research on traditional systems of medicine with the respect of the specificities. And three, even when modern and Ayurvedic scientists work together, they do not necessarily share the same agenda, interest or objective. I will end now with three remaining open questions. First, what are the benefits and shortcomings of modern medical research on Ayurveda? Two, how will Ayurveda develop its own agenda and its own research and emancipate from modern medicine? Three, up to what extent can research contribute to a better recognition of Ayurveda? We know there, we know there is a gap between scientific and social recognition. I'd like to thank you very much for the help. Shri PR Krishna Kumar, Dr. Ram Manohar, and all AVP people, Mrs. Manora Madan Katraman, and Dr. Vinod Kumar, and you for your attention. I'm very open to questions.